Big Ben saying American Top Team, yes. <laughs> the NFL Super Bowl is a big event, and this year it's in Tampa on Sunday, February 7th. Before enjoying the big game, multi-talented fighter Paige Van Zandt will be enjoying another big event in Tampa, near Tampa, when on Friday, February 5th, she makes her much-anticipated Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship debut at BKFC 16, a.k.a. Knuckle Mania. <laughs> <laughs> also love the name of the two fighters, Paige Van Zandt versus Britton Hart. That sounds good, too. Yep. Thank you so much, Paige. What do you think, first of all, the name? Knuckle Mania! Uh, it's awesome. I mean, obviously, it's really exciting. They're definitely going really big for this event, especially having it be, uh, you know, Super Bowl weekend in Tampa, where the Super Bowl is. So they're making it a, a really big deal. It will be at the RP Funding Center in Lakeland, which is east of Tampa, with fans socially distanced. What does it mean to you to have fans at your BKFC debut? It's huge. Um, it's amazing to have fans there. You know, we wouldn't be as successful as we are without the fans, their support system. So I really appreciate that. I think it's going to be an amazing audience. I was able to go to a bare knuckle fight a few months ago and there was fans there as well. And it was a really, really great environment. What do you know about your opponent, Britton Hart? Britton Hart, I actually was able to watch quite a bit of film on her because she is a bare knuckle veteran. She, we have a common opponent, which is really funny, in Beck Rawlings. I fought her in the UFC. So it was interesting to go back and kind of see the differences between the fight style with her and, and, uh, and Bare Knuckle versus Beck and, and my style when I fought her, obviously, in an MMA fight. So she's talented. She's really tough. She's a veteran of the sport. So now I'm coming into her world to take over. We're here at American Top Team in South Florida, Coconut Creek. So much talent. Fighters, coaches, what's it been like training here? Training here has been amazing and you know coming into a gym like this you always wonder like what they're doing different because they are so successful and in the back of your mind coming from smaller gyms you always wonder like what are they doing that makes them so special and am I doing that too? So coming here I was able to really feel the difference in the training regimen and and know the hard work that I was putting in everywhere else is the same, but now I have the high level coaching to be in my corner as well. And to have coaches that have trained these champions believe in me and tell me how good I am and tell me how successful I'm going to be is, it makes a big difference mentally going into the fight. So much of the fight game is mental. Have you been on this roller coaster ride, UFC, young age doing that, being <laughs> successful, having some downs as well, now coming into bare knuckle fighting what have you learned in those in that short time span or over those years mentally yeah i think mentally fighting is 90 percent of it is mental so you have to be mentally strong and um it's about having faith in yourself and having faith in your coaches and your corners knowing that you've done everything possible and you've done exactly what you needed to do to be successful it's it's having that faith in in yourself and in your training and having faith that you know even though you can't see it yet, it's it's gonna be it's gonna it's gonna come through. During your first victories and your first losses, was either one tougher to deal with than the other early on? Early on, um, of course, the losses are harder to deal with. I mean, um, being a fighter, you know, we're fighting, especially for a bare knuckle. It's only a ten minute fight. It's five two minute rounds. So. To know that you're sacrificing every single day of your life, hours and hours and hours for 10 minutes, um, is it's terrifying. You know, you want to have that high, and when you win, it's it makes it all worth it. But when you lose, you question like the last six months of your life. You know, it's not just one moment. It's not just 10 minutes. It's every second that led up to that. Has that gotten better? Dealing with any setbacks? Ah, uh, no. Setbacks are always hard. Um, it's unfortunate. I think that's hard when you're. Um, because I am still in this 100%. You know, when Connor fought, people questioned why he wasn't as upset after that last fight. And they're thinking maybe his head's not in it. But for me, it's like every loss hurts the same. I put the same amount of effort and energy into every single fight that I go into. Did you watch that fight? I did, yeah. What did you think? Dustin Poirier Dustin from American looked, Top Team. Yeah. <laughs> Dustin looked amazing. Obviously, he's my teammate. Um, I still think Connor looked amazing. And I think... People are taking too much away from Dustin and how amazing he looked. Connor is still a champion. He's 
he is one of the best strikers in the entire UFC, I think. And the way Dustin was able to win that fight was amazing. I know it hasn't been long. Do you miss MMA? Uh, parts of it. I miss, I miss pieces of MMA. I definitely miss, um, like, kicking. But striking has always been my thing. I, I like striking more than I like wrestling by a long shot. But um, there's pieces, just pieces of, of MMA that I miss. You and your husband, Austin, of Bellator MMA, moved here to South Florida from the cold. Yeah. <laughs> I hope I have them all right. Colorado, Oregon, Alaska? We moved from Oregon, yeah. Background of Alaska? That's Austin. Austin? Yes. Did you live in Colorado? No. Never? Never so, Colorado. Mm -hmm. So Oregon? Oregon is me, Alaska's him. Mm -hmm. Do you all miss those cold places? Uh, we do. Oregon was our home, and actually that's where our home is still. So we're, it took us a lot of really like mentally committing into 100% leaving our, our home of Oregon. Um, it didn't take us long to know that we would do all of our training here, but it was letting go of like our first home together where we got married. We got married in Oregon, so it's saying goodbye to all of that, like the nostalgia. But um, we committed 100%. We, we moved here. Um, we were supposed to just beat American Top Team and try the gym for a week. And then we just never went home. So we haven't gone back to our house in like seven months. <laughs> in Oregon, could you do sunbathing in December? No, it's snowing. I still go back and look at my cameras on my house and there's snow everywhere. <laughs> so what's it like here in December? When you're able to go by the pool or do something like that. This is definitely meant for me. This kind of weather, I was meant to live somewhere tropical. I always knew that. I'm a beach girl. I always have been. So this is amazing. But we still go back to Alaska. Um, before COVID, we would go back three time, about three times a year. But now we've been back to Alaska just once. Paige Van Zandt, have you been ice fishing? I have never been ice fishing. Austin has, though. He has told me about it. You have a background in dance. Mm -hmm. You've got your fighting, modeling. You've done so much. Chop Champion, Food Network, Celebrity Chop Champion, Dancing with the Stars, Runner Up. My God, UFC, <laughs> it's just amazing. The hunting and fishing background, with that, does that lend itself too to, hey, one time in Alaska, I do want to try the ice fishing? Yeah, I mean, we go back, we go fishing all the time when we're in Alaska, especially in the summer. Um, it's definitely still a part of me. I'm still a country girl at heart. So going back to like my roots is always really fun. When we look at American Top Team, who's your team? Who's been training you for this big bare knuckle fighting championship debut? I have, um, gosh, some of the most amazing coaches. Um, Pahumpa is my head coach. He's like my coach in charge. He's the one who makes sure everything's organized. He's the jujitsu coach though. So I don't actually get to work with him very often. Um, I have Cattell is one of my striking coaches. Gabriel I work with every single day. Um, Macajon, um, and then I have Everton and Will for conditioning. Have you been sparring with anyone in particular, a few fighters to get I ready have, for this? I have, yeah. So I have um, Janisa, who is also signed with BKFC. Um, I have OJ, who just signed with BKFC. Mara and Kayla have been my straight boxing sparring rounds. There is so much talent here, as I mentioned. You mentioned some. Amanda Nunez, Dustin, we mentioned. Adriano Moraes, Joanna J. Seeing them and others here, does that also lend itself to like, wow, here I am, I'm here. I'm part of this too. I belong here. Yeah, I think that the biggest standout for me is just to see that their coaches are my coaches too. So what they're getting, I'm getting as well. I know the hard work and dedication that I have. So now to know that I'm being filled with the knowledge, like the top level knowledge that I can, um, that's what makes it exciting is to know that these coaches trained those fighters and helped make them who they are. Of course, every fighter is individual and has to have the dedication on their own, but to also have the same coaches is really special. You mentioned about the striking and the kicking. So I'll just put it to you with this. What have been the core differences of your training transition from MMA to boxing? Um, the biggest difference is I'm just boxing now. I mean, I don't wrestle, I don't do jujitsu. Every now and then I'll go back and um, do a roll a few rounds to help people out. I was able to spar with a few girls, getting them ready for their fights. 
But for me, it's straight boxing training, and that's, you know, what I'm going to be doing is going to do a boxing match. Do you have any boxing background, too, prior to this? I have. I boxed a little bit. Um, you know, when I first started MMA, you couldn't fight until you're, I mean, and still now, I don't think you can fight until you're 18. So I went straight into boxing first. BKFC 16, Knuckle Mania with Paige Van Zant will be available on all pay-per-view platforms and fight TV. Are you in Austin going to the NFL Super Bowl in Tampa two days later? You know what? We thought about it, and I might go. Unfortunately, Austin actually has to be in Connecticut two days after my fight for Bellator. Um, so I think, I don't know that I could, it would be my first NFL game ever, so I don't know if I could do that without him. But yeah, you might see my face at, at the Super Bowl. Bucks Brady, Chiefs Mahomes, do you and Austin have a choice for the game? Uh, so neither of our teams made it to the Super Bowl. Which are? He's the Jacksonville Jaguars. I'm a Raider. Um, so I think for, like, I don't know, legend standpoint, I would like Tom Brady to win. I think that sounds cool. And I'll tell you what, the Chiefs are big rivals of the Raiders anyway. So okay, it's yeah. always like, yeah, I don't want the Chiefs to win the Raiders. So you said he's going to be going away then. So will you guys be having any small social distancing Super Bowl party or any gathering or anything like that or will it just be you guys no i think it's just us especially after the fights i really just like to be around my family so um he'll go off for a few days and then we'll we'll settle in and he actually is supposed to be fighting i think in april so we'll be right back here <laughs> will you be making anything special since you are the chop celebrity challenge champion food network uh -huh. will you be making anything special for the big game Gosh, I don't know. Without Austin here, I probably won't, but I will be going out to eat. I definitely am craving some, like, really good food. Are you going to get a tattoo eye on your neck? No, I will never get an eye tattoo on my neck. That's Austin's thing. It looks great on him, but no, I will never get an eye tattoo. All right, so we mentioned it. The NFL Super Bowl in Tampa, Raymond James Stadium. BKFC 16, your big event, Knuckle Mania, near Tampa in Lakeland. There's also another big event in April at Raymond James Stadium in Tampa, WWE WrestleMania. Any thoughts, <laughs> Knuckle Mania, Super Bowl, WrestleMania? Are there any thoughts of attending WrestleMania? That'd be awesome. I would love to attend WrestleMania. I was only, I've only been to one live wrestling, uh, like pro wrestling match, so I would absolutely love to go. I think you would be perfect in WWE. And I've read and I've talked to you before about you visited their WWE Performance Center in mm -hmm. Orlando. Have there been any more talks or any more thoughts? I know your focus, obviously, is on yeah. this big fight. You had told me prior that BKFC allows you to do other things mm -hmm. in your, when, you, when time permits. Yeah. Is that still something on your mind, or is that something you put on the back burner? Um, it's definitely on the back burner. Um, right now, I'm really focused on that's such a different skill set to go into. It's so different than... Um, you know, what we do here. So, uh, of course, I'm a huge fan and the door is always open. Uh, but right now I'm super focused on just doing things that will get me ready for, you know, combat sports. Well, lastly on that, when you were there, did you get to see some of the workouts and things that they were doing at the Performance Center? Not too much. No, I got to see a little bit of, like, the idea. I got to see a show, which was really cool. It, it was really neat to see. It was a, definitely a, high, a very high athleticism sport. There are MMA fighters, boxers even, mm -hmm. that have crossed over, and vice versa, to MMA and even boxing. What are your thoughts of the appeal of the crossover between something like WWE and then also bare knuckle fighting? You know, I think the appeal is there. I think it's just, a, they're both exciting. It's an entertainment industry, and yes, our industry in, in BKFC is a little bit more raw, and it's not choreographed, you know, we're going out there and actually going head to head, but um, still, I was able to get a huge appreciation for the WWE. It is a little bit more like, it's definitely not as choreographed as I thought it was. It's more live. It's huge in action athleticism. So it's, it was really cool to see. There's, if you're a fan of the WWE, you should be a fan of BKFC. It's very intense. It's very physical. And you have to be in shape and know what you're doing to be in there. And injuries happen with that too. Now, I wanted to touch base on this because you were an SI swimsuit model. I was in Sports Illustrated, yeah. And you've done modeling, and you had this rugged background, also the dancing. 
But I was curious, when you first started in MMA, and then you can get to UFC, was it a challenge getting respect at first, just because of some of your background, whether it be modeling or dancing? No, at first, the respect was never never a problem. I, I wouldn't say it was until um, later in my career where people were like, oh, well, you should just go do something else. But um, because of the way I look, I guess. But no, when I first started, you know, I'm a, I'm a professional athlete. I've always been an athlete. Going into the gym, it was very easy to prove that I belonged there because of my hard work, dedication, toughness all of those things. But you know, the more fans you get, they want to see you do things that appeal more to them. And maybe some of the fans want me to do something else, but I live my own life. You do. And Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship, Knuckle Mania, that's going to be a huge event, a huge deal that you're a part of. Not to look past that, do you have any other things on your mind that you want to try? I don't know if you, well, you've written, you've written a book. I did write a book. Yeah, I put a book out, I think, year or two ago. What was the name of the book? It's called Rise, uh, Rise, Surviving the Fight of My Life. You've done that as well. Yep. Are there, is there any other thing? Have you done any singing? Have you done any no, music? Sing. Anything like that? <laughs> no. Right now, focused on this. And then, of course, in between fights, there's other like goals and aspirations I have. I'm not actively working on anything right now, but I'd love to eventually have my own cookbook and have my own this and that. So um, those are things that could be five, ten years down the road, though. And you in Austin, he's working with Bellator and getting ready and doing that, and he's an American top team. Do you guys also work out with each other at all or share Not experiences? At all. No, Austin and I, um, because we're in different programs, I'm straight boxing, he's MMA. Our, a lot of our classes, we're fortunate, are around the same time, but um, no, we're on completely different training regimens right now. I also wanted to touch base, and we'll wrap this up, on broadcasting. Mm -hmm. Would that be something that would interest you to do something like that? I have done a few broadcasting um, things. I was able to broadcast for K1 Global. I broadcasted for a uh, jujitsu thing. It was fun. I would say um, I had a good time and I appreciated the experience, but I do see that more as something 10 years down the road. Right now, everything, the focus obviously is you fighting and getting yeah, out there more and doing than combat anything, sports. I wanted to be the one competing. Lastly, Go back a little bit. The Undertaker, who is a legend, and The Rock, and so many others are big MMA fans. And I'm just curious if you met any of them at any of the MMA fights. Um, or other professional wrestlers. You know, sports I have met a few. I've met a lot of people, honestly. It's cool the fight. The the amount of athletes that are fans of, you know, MMA and of boxing and stuff. I feel like this sport is just gaining popularity and of course, I appreciate these other high-level famous athletes showing their support because it just we get more fans and we get more recognition that way. And do you feel like Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship, you're the one that's helping take this to another level. Do you feel that way? Yeah, I hope so. I definitely know that I'm bringing something to the table as far as my following and my demographic that'll come. And then I know that they're gonna, I'm going to gain so much from them as well. TV, movies, acting, Dwayne Johnson, The Rock. Would that be something you'd be up to up to doing if yeah, Dwayne Johnson and his team called and said, hey, you know, we know you're fighting and all, but we want you to be a part of this. It's a sign. It's a Sorry. sign. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs>